tail does it stays in you? It really does. I've been doing it the whole time. Check, check, check. Check one, two, testing one, two, check one, two. Check one, two, testing one, two. Check one, two, testing one, two. Yeah. Yeah, I just. Hello. Oh, it just about there we go. Hi, good good evening. How's everybody how's everybody doing this evening? Because Daniel's having a lot of fun right now. <laughs> I don't know if I like it, but that's okay. I'll roll with it. Welcome. Welcome to Saturday evening at Rock Lake. <laughs> All right. I, I am too. <laughs> I'm very soft-spoken. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> All right. All seriousness, welcome Saturday evening. How's everybody been enjoying the weekend? The Toast family, you guys are like, oh, the accolades could go on, but the thing that carries, like that I think about all the time when I think about you guys is just genuine authenticity. Like, you just bring yourselves and you're so true and pure to who you are. And I'm just so appreciative of that. So thank you so much for everything that you guys bring. And they're coming back next weekend as guests, so. <laughs> I'm pops on my promise. Let's <laughs> we'll see how it goes. Um, but yeah, so glad that everybody's having a good weekend. Um, we love having people on camp. This is this is our favorite part of the year that we get to we get to serve our guests and introduce ourselves and get to know you guys more and all of that fun stuff. So I just want to hit on a few things quickly. We have, if you haven't heard, we have a reboot program going on. Right now, I have to count in my head, we have five students. So if you don't know them, seek them out. Ask them about their year. I'm sure they'll have lots to tell you. And if you know of anybody that could be interested, reboot is a program that is, it's really personalized. But the foundation of the program is to build foundation in your identity in Christ. All of our Reboot students have different stories, different reasons for coming, uh, different ages, the whole shebang. So nobody's counted out. It's a space to come and stop, pause, focus, refocus, um, and be surrounded by community and, and learn, learn a bunch of stuff about how God sees you, which we can all learn more of. So that is, I'm looking at Kathy's face, thank you very much, okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, we'll let you know as well that we have donation envelopes here. If you guys want to sow into the camp, uh, by all means, 
that is there. And then to give you a little bit of a sneak peek of what's coming up this summer, on Monday we start family camp. So we've got Terry Thiessen from Adult Teen Challenge coming out and spending the week with us. As well, on Friday, we've got Daniel Fuster. He comes to us from the Maranatha Church in Niverville. And then I just want to make sure that I have my dates correct. We have Vincenza Enns coming uh, August 4th to the 6th. She's part of the national team for the prayer wall in Canada. And she love her. And then August 11th to the 13th is still a little bit, little bit to be determined, um, but it's going to be good. Pastor Chow and I just had a, a check-in today, and he's, he's got some good ideas rolling around. So August 4th to the 6th, Vincenza, and then, sorry, we do have family camp from the 7th to the 10th, and that's with Brooke and Steph Friesen. They come out of the Wake Church from Winnipeg, and... August 11th to the 13th. That'll be like our closing reboot graduation. Our students are going to be graduating from their year and figuring out what they're doing next and all of that stuff. So if you're around, come join us. And then I'll give it over to you guys. All right. Well, stand and worship the Lord. More worship. Worship, eat. Worship, eat. Worship, dessert. Worship. <laughs> Thank you. 
children, God. We are grateful to be adopted into your family and grafted in. We praise you and we give you glory. For you are a God of family. And we thank you that your perfect love casts out all fear. And so tonight we decree and declare there is no fear in this place but the fear of the Lord. We thank you for the fear of the Lord. We decree the only fear we have in our hearts is our the fear of you, reverence, proper worship and adoration. Thank you, Lord. Okay, time to get your roar on. <laughs> Somebody put your hand to your belly or your spirit and say roar. Come on. <laughs> yeah. God of Jacob.
Darkness flees. We lift him high, high, high. Strongholds come down, 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 down. We lift you high, come down, down, down. We lift you high, high, high. Strongholds come down, down, down. We lift your name up high. Strongholds come down, down.
this King of glory? Who is this King of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty. He is the Lord, mighty in battle. Who is this King of glory? surrounds don't be afraid he's around he's on the left and the right in the front and behind he surrounds you he goes before the Lord strong and mighty who is this king of glory the Lord strong and mighty who is this king of glory the Lord strong and mighty
every crown is falling down There's a beauty in the sound Of every crown falling down We take our crowns, take our crowns, take our crowns There's a beauty in the sound So worthy of it all. From you all to you all praise. You deserve the glory. You So worthy of it all. So from you all our praise, and to you all our praise, you deserve the glory. Cause you were worthy of it all. so worthy of it all, for from you are all praise, and to you are all praise, and you deserve the glory, day and night. from you all our praise and to you all our praise you deserve the glory this 
Sing with me out of faith is our God, and all will see how great, how great is our God. grace to just come before you and worship you, thank you, and adore you. Lord, we love you. We glorify you. I was getting an interpretation for the tongue that you were speaking, brother. Praise be to the Lord of heaven on er and earth. Praise be to the Lord of heaven and earth. Praise be to the Lord of heaven and earth, the only one who is worthy. The only one who is worthy. The only one who is worthy. The one true living God. Praise be to the one true living God. The only one who is worthy.
I think I feel comfortable sitting. <laughs> Just feels like I'm in a living room with my family. So I like that feeling. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You gonna sit with me here now too? All right. Oh, honey. No. Okay. All right. Well, I'll just open up with prayer. Lord, I just thank you. Thank you for your presence, Lord. We just thank you. You're so good. And Lord, I just pray right now that you would just um, help me to articulate what. What you put in my heart and, 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 and passion that you put in my heart, Lord, for your word and, and, and for worship. And, and I pray that it would just uh, be able to come across easily and clearly, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> I called this, this, I guess, a teaching or whatever, I called it Progression of Worship. Because as I was reading in the Old Testament, you know, when Moses built the tabernacle, it was, uh, there was a protocol, and, and he had to be very careful how he built every piece of furniture and how he, how he put the, uh, the tabernacle together, and it was very, he couldn't make a mistake. I mean, it was very, it's, it's amazing when you read it, it's like he had to make it right to the, to the inch and to the, it had to be a specific size. It had to be made of specific uh, metals or wood. And I just found that very intriguing. So if we want to turn, I'm not going to read all of it because once, once you get into it, it's quite lengthy. But if you want to turn to Exodus 27... Twenty seven, and I'm going to read um, verses one through eight. So it says, Plans for the altar of the burnt offering. So, actually, if you get a little music, then maybe I'll. <laughs> so, so this is the this is like the first piece. Now, um, this is the first piece. It's called the, the, the burnt offering. It's like, so it says, using acacia wood, construct a square altar, seven and a half feet wide, seven and a half feet long, four and a half feet high, and make horns for each of its four corners so that the horns and the altar are all on one piece. Overlay the altar with bronze, make ash buckets, shovels, basins, meat forks, fire pans, all of bronze. Make a bronze grating for it and attach four bronze rings in its four corners. Install the grating halfway down the side of the altar under the ledge. For carrying the altar, make the poles for of acacia wood and overlay them with bronze. Insert the poles through the rings on the two sides of the altar, and the altar must be hollow, made from the planks. Build it just as you were shown on the mountain. So as God took him up to the, the mountain and showed him all these things, it was very, very specific. And uh, I, just, I just found that interesting. So I just wanted to share with you um, what, what I studied and kind of, kind of uh, felt passionate about because even though this is the Old Testament and how they worshipped, it can still be uh, used for today. So this brazen altar, it's the first piece of furniture. It's used for sacrifices. And it's like a, a, a prayer of sacrifice that we offer when we offer up our prayers even today. It's a sacrifice. And with every aspect of our Christian life, it always involves sacrifice. You know, we're supposed to be living sacrifices. So even though God required a sacrifice back then, we are now living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to him. 
So sacrifice is a, a key element in our relationship to God. And uh, I put here, want more of the Holy Spirit? Just surrender. We just need to surrender. That's all he's asking. You know, it's not complicated. It's actually very simple, you know. And so, because one time I was asking, oh, Lord, I just want more of, more of you, more of the Holy Spirit. And I just heard the one word, surrender. <laughs> and so I just thought, yeah. So what are the sacrifices we need to bring today? So if you turn to Psalm 51, verse 17, um, let's see how fast I can get here. Psalm fifty-one, seventeen. It says, "The sacrifice you desire is a broken spirit. You will not reject a broken and a repentant heart, O God." So when we come before the Lord, we should always have a broken and contrite heart, a very tender heart. So that's uh, interesting about that first piece of furniture is about sacrifice. And then so it's like we just need to bring a broken and a contrite heart before him. The second furniture is called the laver of washing. So it's Exodus 30, 17 through 21, if you want to. Okay. So then the Lord said to Moses, you shall also make a lever of bronze with its base also of bronze for washing. You shall put it between the tabernacle of the meeting and the altar, and you shall put it in water. And Aaron and his sons shall wash their hands and their feet in water from it. And when they go into the tabernacle of meeting or when they come near the altar, to minister, to burn an offering made by fire to the Lord, they shall wash with water, lest they die. So they shall wash their hands and their feet, lest they die. And they're supposed to do this forever. So, yeah, lest they die. So the lever of washing, which I felt is for today, is praise and worship. When we praise and worship, it sanctifies us to see and feel the glory of God. So Psalms 24, 23 says, give us clean hands and a pure heart. So there's that washing again. It's like David was saying, give us clean hands and a pure heart. So, yeah. And what I wanted to share with you is that that all those pieces of wood that are made of acacia wood, apparently it was a very common wood in that area. It's nothing special about it. It wasn't like, like today we have all these very special kinds of woods like, you know, it could be oak or red oak or, or all these special things. But acacia wood apparently was a very, very common uh, wood in the area. And you know what? I loved it because it's like God's no respecter of person. And he can use common, everyday people like us. And then he always overlaid everything with either bronze or gold. And that's kind of like what he does with us today. It's like he uses ordinary people, but he works in us and he overlays us with gold. So I, I thought that was cool. So, <laughs> so, yeah, thanksgiving, praise and worship. So when they did come into that tabernacle, they gave thanks, they praised, they worshipped. It's like, it's, it's all these protocols, you know. And uh, I likened it to an eagle. So Thanksgiving is like springing up from the tree or the place where you are. It's like you're giving thanks. The praise, when we're praising and it's kind of fast songs and stuff, I, I see like an eagle flapping. And it's working to climb. And where's it going? It wants to soar. And then, <laughs> and then the worship, well, that's what I can't wait for. Because <laughs> that's like, that's the soaring. Yeah. So it's kind of, if you want to liken it to, you know, when we're, when we're coming before the Lord and worshiping, it's like we're, we're um, 
yeah, just thanksgiving, praise, and worship. So it's like springing up with thanksgiving, giving him thanks, and then praising, just just working and dusting ourselves off. And then I I, I just love the soaring. So yeah, praise doesn't have to be a fast song. So <laughs> yeah. So uh, what is worship? Psalm 96.9, I put here. Let's see. Um, Okay, I want to see if I can find it. You got it? Okay, I got it here too. These are bigger words. I'm getting old. (laughs) So 96.9 says, Worship the Lord in all his holy splendor. Let all the earth tremble before him. You know, and worship is the beauty of holiness. So worshiping God is very closely related to holiness. It brings you near his throne, near his footstool. So, okay, now we did the brazen altar. Then you wash your hands. Now the third thing, um, there's there are two more things, but they kind of go side by side, and they're the only ones that are side by side. It's the candlestick. And so we can go to Exodus 25, and it talks about the candlestick. And the candlestick and the showbread kind of sat side by side. And so, what is this? Exodus 25, 31 through 40. So plans for the lampstand. Make a lampstand, pure hammered gold. Make the entire lampstand as decorations one piece. And it just talks about all the building of the lampstand. And what it had was it had seven, it had seven um, arms on it. And that represents the seven spirits of God, which is in Isaiah 11.2. You can turn to that if you want. In Isaiah 11.2, the seven spirits of God. And that's, yeah. Isaiah 11, 2, the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. The spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. Yeah, so the, the, in the candlestick, the Holy Spirit is the central spirit. It's like he's the Holy Spirit, but the, it's just facets of the Holy Spirit branching out from that center one. You know, which is wisdom, revelation, fear of the Lord. Um, wisdom, understanding, yep. counsel, and might, knowledge, and fear. Yeah, so one Holy Spirit, just seven manifestations, kind of like a rainbow. I guess it's got seven colors, but when we look at it in the sky, it's just a rainbow. It's one item, but it's seven, seven things. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> so i just put here you know that candlestick represents the holy spirit in the tabernacle it's it's the it's the holy spirit and we need to walk in the spirit but what does that mean it means no more selfish prayers but praying his will his purpose you know so the table of showbread that speaks of his word and the meditation of God's word. So a healthy prayer life, I put, consists of three things. Number one, prayer. Number two, meditation on his word. And number three, waiting on God. The three things for a healthy prayer life. Prayer, meditation of his word, and waiting on God. And sometimes, I don't know if this would help you but sometimes when I'm reading the word and I'm just reading and it's just reading but then sometimes something just pops out to me it just kind of jumps out like a little scripture or something I just pay attention to that and I just meditate on that because I think okay why is this jumping out to me or why am I liking this right now maybe God's trying to say something to me you know and then after that you think about that you ponder that then just wait maybe he's going to speak to you Maybe he's going to rev- give you a revelation of something. So what I like about that, Eddie, I like how 
the three things of a healthy prayer life is number one is prayer. <laughs> and, you know, it sounds funny, but how many times can we, like, go in a day, you know, and you, you talk to somebody, how are you? And they're like, actually, you know, I'm going through this. And you say, well, I'll pray for you. But how many times we can say it, you know, but I've been more convicted lately of, like, okay, it's kind of adding up. Like, you said you'd pray for this and this and this now to do it. So I'm just, yeah, I like that. I mm-hmm. mean, yeah. And I like that the showbread and the candlestick, they had to be side by side, and he would, Moses would pass in between them, or the priests, you know, and they would pass in between them. But they were the only furniture that was side by side. And I think because the showbread speaks of the word of God and the candle speaks of the Holy Spirit, it's like the word without the spirit. If they're not side by side, the word without the spirit, there's no balance. And the spirit without the word, there's no life. You know, it can get crazy, you know, and it's just got no no kind of grounding. So, and what does God say? He says, my words are spirit and are life. You know, so I love that because it's like what they need each other. So I thought that was very interesting that they would be side by side because the Holy Spirit illuminates the word to us, you know. Um, Another cool thing I found, now I need to dig into this a little more, but I still wanted to share. But the candlestick, the, well, as they were building the candlestick, there was these little cherry blossom or whatever leaves that they had to carve into them. And they were uneven. There was 39 on the left, and 27 on the right. There's 39 Old Testament books and 27 new. So, like, God is like, like, <laughs> yeah, I couldn't believe that. I was like, you know, he, he thought of everything, you know. It would be, that would be somewhere in Exodus 25, where it talks about that. that yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, the whole, no, no. <laughs> yeah, Anna, read your Bible. <laughs> no, I'm joking. <laughs> so. Anyways, the Holy Spirit illuminates the word to us and gives us revelation. Okay, so we've we've already done four of these already, so I I know it won't take too long. Okay, number five, the altar of incense. Okay, now this is where they, they, the next thing before you got to that Ark of the Covenant is this altar of incense that you had to, you had to light it and with a bunch of spices and stuff like that. And and, and offer it to the Lord. And it, it was a specific um, uh, kinds of spices. Um, altar of incense is 30, uh, Exodus 30, uh, 34, I think. Yeah. So the four qualities of God to which we can worship and appeal before him, justice, holiness, grace, and truth. And the three spices had to be mixed with frankincense, which also represents the Holy Spirit. Oh, got it here. So yeah, so then in Exodus 30, 34, then the Lord said to Moses, gather fragrant spices, resin droplets, mollusk shell, and galbanum, and mix these fragrant spices with pure frankincense, weighed out in equal amounts. Using the usual techniques of the in- incense maker, Blend the spices together and sprinkle them with salt to produce a pure and holy incense. Grind some of the mixture into a very fine powder. Put it in front of the Ark of the Covenant where I will meet with you in the tabernacle. And you must treat this incense as most holy. Never use this formula to make this incense for yourselves. It's reserved for the Lord and you must treat it as holy. And, yeah, just... I, um, but the altar of incense was closely related to the candlestick. Why is that? They needed to be attended to at the same time. So we need the Holy Spirit to help us and anoint us as we intercede and worship. And we need pure frankincense to be added to our worship. That's, that's the help of the Holy Spirit. I mean, even, even tonight, it's the Holy Spirit 
that's drawing us all before the Father, you know. And I love that. It, without his help and his, his grace, without his leading, and, and, and we're trying to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit as we're worshiping as well, you know, and, and, and bring a, a pure and holy offering in order to have the fullness of the Holy Spirit moving, we must be totally surrendered. He cannot move if we don't let him into certain areas of our lives. He will only go as far as we allow him. You know, so if we're willing, he will, he will take us all the way, you know. And just on that note real quick, so tomorrow, um, tomorrow morning... I'm going to be sharing some testimony, personal testimony, and how that ties into here is when we're fully surrendered, then he can take us all the way. It might look different than we, <laughs> we think, but he gets the glory, but <laughs> it's good. <laughs> it's still good. So with this altar of incense, I, I just kind of put a little something. We, we have some intercessors here tonight, so... You know, it, they, they probably would just hang out at that incense area. I'd probably try to jump over and get near the ark. <laughs> <You know? laughs> but I can't. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but the, um, I was just writing a few things down um, to be a good intercessor. So uh, a true intercessor is a person that prays for someone else, a city or a nation. But if you pray for yourself, I think that's just called a prayer of faith. You're not really interceding for yourself. It's just a prayer of faith that you're just praying. But an intercessor, uh, a person that, um, Melanie's mom, uh, she's an intercessor. And she can sometimes stay up like all night praying if God calls her to it. And it doesn't even bother her at all. You know, like I've never, it's a gift. I've never been able to do that. Um, but I really appreciate it. And um, so to be a good intercessor, I put number one, you need to identify. Um, uh, Hebrews 4.15, I put. You need to have compassion. Every time Jesus moved in healing or, or with something, you, you saw, like, there's a scripture, Jesus wept. You know, he always had compassion. So his heart was always moved with compassion. Even, even when the lady grabbed the hem of his garment, you know, and, and he's like, Who's, who touched me? And I like when the disciples said, what do you mean who touched you? Everybody's touching you. And you know what? I kind of sense that sometimes in worship. It's like we can, there's those that really grab a hold of the Lord. You know what I mean? And, and then there's those that, don't even realize the Lord's even there, you know, it's just, but I just want to hunger like that lady grabbed the hem of his garment and just wanted something from him, wanted a touch. She needed a touch. And that's how I, I try to come to worship like that all the time. I'm like, man, I don't want to miss nothing, you know, and even the disciple, I found it so funny. It's like, what do you mean who touched you? Everybody's touching you. It's a whole crowd. Everybody's rubbing up against you. And she says, no, I felt something. Mm -hmm. I felt something. And that's how I, you know, want us to approach worship too, is just with that intention, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, sec Can I read that scripture? It's such mm -hmm. a good scripture. Yeah. Hebrews, um, Hebrews 4, 4 15. 15. Actually, Hebrews 4, 14, 15. Okay. Seeing that we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses. Mm. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. Don't you just fall in love with him all over again? <laughs> <laughs> but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. So let us therefore come boldly mm. to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Yeah. So... The number one thing to be a good intercessor, we need to identify, we need to have compassion, we need to, uh, it, it's like when somebody comes for prayer, and it's not just like, yeah, I'll just pray for you, you know, I, I want the Lord to actually, you know, sometimes you, you want to feel that person, you know, he allows you to feel what that person's feeling, and all of a sudden I start crying because I'm feeling like this, this loneliness or compassion or pain or, 
or whatever they're going through, you know, and he just lets us feel just a touch of that so we can, we can effectively pray and know what that person going through. Like, I mean, um, the second thing is persistency, not giving up, you know, it's being persistent. Like that widow that she just thought, no, nope. you know, and people were like, no, get out of here. You shouldn't even be here actually because you're unclean. You know, what do you, what do you even do? Like, it must have been, she must have been pretty brave to, to do something like that in those days because, you know, back then you, you, you couldn't, you were kind of shunned, you know. And then number three, travailing in the spirit, groanings. Um, I put Galatians 4.19. We're just called to carry his burdens. And then number six, the Ark of the Covenant signifies waiting on God. So when we, when we give those sacrifices, when we cleanse our hands, we, 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 we bring before him clean hands, pure heart, the Holy Spirit's illuminating word to us, and we, we bring that fragrant incense, those prayers of, of thanksgiving and, and honor to the Lord, then when we get to the Ark of the Covenant, it's just, that's that, that waiting on God. Um, his presence, yeah. Um, and then I put that ark. That ark was all overlaid with gold. Lots of those other things, bronze and things like that. But that ark, totally overlaid with gold. But made of that same common wood underneath, which I found so interesting. I was like, he didn't make it extra special. It's like, I love that. I, I really, I love the Lord for that. Because he can take anybody any broken person that feels like they don't have much to offer but yet he can overlay them with gold and and make something beautiful out of their out of their life and then i put um um when moses was told to build the tabernacle and he went up into the mountain what did god tell him to what did god show him first he didn't show him he showed him the, the Ark of the Covenant, how to build that Ark. I found that interesting because he didn't tell him, okay, he didn't start from the beginning. Okay, I need you to come in through this door and build this altar of sacrifice where you're going to burn everything and lay it all down. And then you're going to build the thing where you wash your hands. Then you're going to do the showbread and the candlestick. No, he showed him the Ark. And you know what? I thought that was so cool. Because God always works from the inside out. He always starts with the heart. And so it's always about the heart. It's always about, that's what he's most interested in, is the heart. Yes, we need to do the praying, and the worshiping, and the bringing clean hands, keeping, keeping our hands clean and everything. But God always works from the inside out. He's always after the heart. And that's that, that special place, you know. So waiting on him, staying in his presence, and I put, why do we need to wait on him? And you can look up Isaiah 40, verse 31. The reason why we need to wait on him is because our strength will be renewed. So even in moments like we had tonight when we all worshipped and we felt like we were singing, for your name is holy, I could, I could really... Oh, something was changing, you know, and we were just, just singing for your name is holy. And you know what? That transforms us when you get in his presence. It just, I just feel different. I could be so tired. I could have such a bad day, but man, when I get into that secret place, you know what? Nothing else matters. And actually as tired as I was and wanting to take a nap, all of a sudden I got all this energy. <laughs> you know, it's like it's the weirdest thing. Maybe, Maybe I can drive home all night. <laughs> <laughs> we have decisions to make. He's either has yeah. to drive home tonight or, or early in the morning. <laughs> um, how are we for time? Isaiah. It's quarter to we're nine, we're okay. and and we're just about done actually. Anna hasn't. We can. Yep. Yep. No, you can. Well, how are you guys doing? There's there's snacks, right? Okay. okay, we're just well, about done with this. We'll, we'll, and we'll try to... Oh, actually, it's okay. Okay, okay Isaiah 40, 31. 
40, 31. Our strength is renewed. Yes, but those that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary and walk yeah. and not faint. Yeah. So the key is all in waiting. That's, that's why we wait. And he transforms a Psalms 40, verse 1. If, uh, it, that's another thing that waiting on God does. It, it transforms us. And waiting, waiting on God is part of worship. So uh, Psalm 40, verse 1, I waited patiently for the Lord to help me. And he turned to me and heard my cry, and he lifted me out of a pit of despair, out of the mud and mire, yeah. set my feet on a solid rock, and steadied me as I walked along. He has given me a new song to sing, a hymn of praise to our God. And many will see what he's done and be amazed and put their trust in him. Wow. You know, so. What a testimony. Yeah. And, and, um, and then the last thing, the thing I've always <laughs> His favorite. been waiting for, my favorite, <laughs> is when the Shekinah glory fills and Moses can't go in there and nobody can go in there. And it's just like, <laughs> and, and the priests couldn't do their thing anymore or nothing. I, I'm just waiting for that day. I'm waiting for that, that thick cloud of his presence to fill us, you know, and even the atmosphere, you know. <laughs> even as we lead worship here and there, and when we enter into these, like we end, this was a deep place tonight, guys. Like this was... This was throne room worship. This was like, and we were together. And when we were singing, holy, holy, like we were joining with heaven. You know, we were joining with the angels. And the angels get excited when we sing like heaven. Because there's a lot of music out there that they don't do in heaven. We'll just put that out there. <laughs> yeah, but there's... but I, I was going to say just because I love you, I, I'll see him like, you know, we're worshiping together. And then when that thickness falls, we're like, <laughs> looking for the cloud, looking for the mist in the room, you know. There was one time. There was one time. This was this was many years ago, and uh, and it was when um, the end time handmaidens had their uh, conferences, and they, yeah, and they'd asked us to go, and we went and uh, we we did worship there, and man, I'm telling you, I there, it was the only time I've ever, and I've never forgotten it, and. If anybody knows me, I'm a fire bug. I like fires. I like camping. I like starting the fires. I've passed that torch on to Anna. Yeah. She's a really good fire starter, and she loves it too. And I can sit. I can just, like, I wish I had, like, a real fire in our house, like a fireplace, because I'm, well, I'd probably be lighting that thing all the time because there's just something about a fire, and I love the crackle, and I can sit in front of it. And, and I've always loved the smell. Yeah. Well, anyways, we're doing this worship. We're doing this worship, and all of a sudden, there was this cloud that came into the room. And, you know, and you're talking like there's, there was, I don't know, maybe 300 intercessors or something maybe in that room. I don't know. All intercessors. You three were you know. there. You were yeah. there. Yes. And all of a sudden, the cloud filled that room, and and then the fire department came because somebody called and said the fire alarms were going off <laughs> and the fire department came and to put up the fire and they couldn't find a fire and it smelled so, and good. and it smelled like campfire like camp and i couldn't believe it and so anyways they stayed for the longest time just double checking trying to make sure then it dawned on everybody <laughs> oh this could be the presence of the Lord. And I think a few were catching on to that. And when I figured that out, I just kept on, <sighs> you know, and I was looking around and I was like, oh, it was, just, it was like one of the most exciting things. And I, and I thought, I'm just going to close my eyes and take in this moment. And I, and I meditated it, you know, like, I'm never going to forget this. You know, I was like, I just wanted it burned into my soul. Like, that I wanted to remember how God showed up. And it was, it made me excited because it smelled like a campfire. And I thought, oh, man, that's awesome. <laughs> you know? <laughs> it was amazing. And there was a lot of reverence in the room after the yep. 
hustle and bustle with the fire department and everything. Yeah. But, yeah. Like, you know, mist, what are we going to do? Mist or cloud kind of hovering around the roof area. At yeah. The time. And, I, uh, yeah, so, so anyways, I, I hope that's, that's kind of it for me. I hope that you guys were uh, yeah. um, uh, blessed with that. I, I know that I was kind of um, just passionate about that because of just, just how I f always felt about it, you know. I just, I just thought, okay, it's Old Testament, but there's still a protocol when we come before the Lord. He still wants a sacrifice. We still have to have clean hands and a pure heart. We still offered that incense now. It's not just a burning of smoke and mixes or of spices, which I, I think would be so cool to see or whatever, but now it's it's our prayers and our worship, and and it's reading his word and having the Holy Spirit, like that candlestick, illuminate God's word to us so we can understand it, and then coming before him like we did tonight and just waiting on him. Sometimes it's a little awkward, but then... It, you know, we're we're trying, we're 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 training for heaven, you know, so that when we get there, we might be able to help somebody that maybe just squeaked in, and say, no, this is how you do it, <laughs> you know, <laughs> just come come this way and just worship <laughs> the Lord, and, you know, because <laughs> we're already practicing for heaven, so but, you know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> no, we're good. We're at ten to nine. Ten to nine. How are you guys doing? Because we can. I just go a little bit. You got a little. Just a little bit. I'll just share a little bit. Okay. okay. It won't be a lot. All right. Everybody coming up. Everybody Yeah. <laughs> Is this one? No, I, I think. Try this one. Is this one? Can you? St oh. oh it's on. Yeah. I don't get them too close because then they'll make that ugly sound. <laughs> okay. Um. So, uh, the, the word I'm hearing the Lord speak over and over in my heart is, "Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid." And I think it's about reading the things in the Bible that are a little hard to understand and accept. Like some of the violent things that happen in the Old Testament or Revelation. And I want to touch specifically on the book of Revelation. I'm not going to go deep into it, but I am very passionate about Revelation. The Jesus, the Jesus, the revelation of Jesus Christ. Um, to me, it's ever been something that's Hard, truly hard to read through and understand and I know that I'm going to be honest and say I do not completely understand everything in the book of Revelation but my experience is that when I was very young I had a vision I had a vision when I was five years old or six years old and I was taken to the throne room and this was before I had read the Bible. I didn't know about the Bible, that part of the Bible, okay? <laughs> so, she was just reading about the puppy something, so no, she didn't know about Revelation. <laughs> <laughs> Not Paw Patrol. <laughs> She's pre Paw Patrol. <laughs> This one's pretty loud here, Daddy. Switch it. You want to turn it down a little bit? That's why I did the lip smack. Okay. This one? I guess I'll speak into this one. Is this one really loud? It's better? Okay.
So um, this is exactly what I saw in my vision as a child. And it, this is Revelation. Four. Revelation 4, and it says, The throne in heaven. After this, I looked, and there before me was a door standing open in heaven, and the voice I had first heard speaking to me like a trumpet said, and this is John speaking, because he got a revelation of Jesus Christ. He just showed, Jesus showed him these things. The trumpet, like a, the voice like a trumpet said, Come up here, and I will show you what must take place after this. At once I was in the spirit, and there before me was a throne in heaven with someone sitting on it, and the one who sat there had the appearance of jasper and ruby. A rainbow that shone like an emerald encircled the throne. Surrounding the throne were twenty-four el other thrones, and seated on them were twenty-four elders. They were dressed in white and had crowns of gold on their heads. From the throne came flashes of lightning, rumblings, and peals of thunder. In front of the throne, seven lamps were blazing. These are the seven spirits of God. Also, in front of the throne, there was what looked like a sea of glass, clear as crystal. In the center around the throne were four living creatures, and they were covered with eyes in front and in back. The first living creature was like a lion. The second was like an ox. The third had the face like a man. The fourth was like a flying eagle. Each of the four living creatures had six wings and was covered with eyes all around, even under its wings. Day and night, they never stopped saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. <gasps> Thank you, Jesus. So, oh Lord, help me. So that scripture, I hadn't known about that scripture, but I saw it word for word, described exactly like that as a child, and I told mom and dad about it. And they said, well, they didn't say anything. I just found out that, I found that out when I got older. I guess you know better than I do. Check, check. I do remember, what I do remember, because we write, we wrote all of these encounters down in a book. Um, but I do remember when she drew a picture, she drew like a red and a green rainbow. And that's, this is so funny, because you were like, Anna, do you know that the rainbow has seven colors? <laughs> and that's probably why she didn't remember, because she's like, it's red and green, because that's what's described around the throne, right? Is the sardius and the emerald. Y yeah, or cornrea. And that's red and green. Interesting. Mm -hmm. um, so I keep hearing again, do not be afraid, um, because blessed are you who... Accept the words of Revelation. Blessed are you who read that book and take it and store it up in your heart. Um, no, I don't understand everything in it, but my spirit does. And my spirit is at peace with all of the things that Jesus talked about to John in that book. Um, because I saw it for myself before I knew about it. And so I have a real deep connection to that book. And es especially, I want to talk about four living creatures and their connection to worship um the four living creatures they're created for worship that's what they do is they they have eyes all over their body and why that's a little creepy when you think about it but <laughs> it's so that they can always see the new things god create because he's never stopped creating from the moment he said let there be light it's still going and he's still There's just new things happening all the time in heaven, so that's their only response is, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God. Holy, 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 man, holy, holy. <laughs> and so what's interesting is that there's four living creatures around the throne. Um, and they, com they directly relate to worship because they are like the four expressions of worship. So the ox... In worship, the ox represents plowing. And a lot of the time when we begin to worship, there's opposition. Maybe it's from the congregation. Maybe it's from the enemy. Maybe it's just from, <laughs> yeah, from the flesh. And so you have to plow through it like an ox. 
plow through it. Um, break up the dry ground so that seeds can be planted. So I've got it here. The ox, symbolic for labor, sacrifice, and plowing. Plow the atmosphere by doing vertical worship. So let me just remember. Vertical, horizontal, right? Horizontal and vertical. Look, I wasn't good in school, so <laughs> that's that's not true. Oh, actually, that, thank you. That's gonna help me. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, so uh, ver- vertical worship. So if you focus in too much on the enemy, do not spend time in the muck. Okay, if if you're trying to worship God in your own house, let's say, alone, and you're just trying to sing a song, you can't seem to sing a song. Um, Just start declaring uh, what, who God is. Start focusing on God, saying, you are worthy, you are holy. Um, You don't have to spend time binding up the enemy, unless that's something you really feel you have to do, but you don't have to spend that time, because the Lord's already got the victory, and you just have to declare his victories. Yeah. Um, so yeah, don't pay attention to what the enemy is doing. Pay attention to what God is doing. Don't waste your breath binding up evil spirits. Declare God. Lift him up. If you focus on opposition or horizontal stuff (laughs) for too long, you are going to be in the mud for much longer than necessary. Increase comes by the strength of the ox. And the verse that goes with that is Proverbs 14.4. Proverbs 14.4. Sure. I don't have... Yeah, mom, could you please... Could you please get it to me? (laughs) Got you. Yeah, Proverbs 14.4. Where no oxen are, the trough is clean, but much increase comes by the strength of an ox. And so my PS, I'm not adding to the word, but that just means like poop is good. (laughs) <laughs> where there's <laughs> oxen and poop. <laughs> well, <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm just. <laughs> hey, wait, 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 wait. wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Rewind. Well, you don't want a clean trough because you want the oxen. How about we put it that way? Hey, that means it doesn't have to be perfect. It just have to be. You don't have to be perfect. That's what. It, that's, I'll take it like that, okay? Um, we're not going to say... <laughs> Dad's... <laughs> Dad's... <laughs> Dad's version says, without oxen, a stable stays clean, but you need a strong ox for a large harvest, so you need power. It's, it's, about, <laughs> it's about power. <laughs> All right, so the second living creature is with the face of a lion. <laughs> yeah. So a lion is symbolic for dominion, authority, boldness, praise, and a roar. So lift your voices and enforce God's victory. That's Proverbs 28, 1, and Amos 3, 8. <laughs> listen, 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 listen here. <laughs> Tomato, tomorrow. The wicked run away when no one is chasing them, but the godly are as bold as lions. Amos 3 8. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was Proverbs 28 1, and then Amos 3 8. We'll go there. I'm, I, I will go there. <laughs> yeah, you can be the Bible teacher. Yeah, but where? Thank that's you. a hard one to find. <laughs> we'll go there after. after. Before Joel. <laughs> Before Thank you. 
That's right, Sandy. Without fertilizer, nothing will grow. Yeah. All right, so Amos 3 8 says, The lion has roared, so who isn't frightened? The sovereign Lord has spoken, so who can refuse to proclaim his message? Okay, so that is a, 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 that's an expression of worship. Um, it's symbolic for dominion, authority, boldness, praise, and a roar. So lift your voices and enforce God's victory. So after you've gotten past the muck, and we've plowed the ground, and we pushed through opposition, we've declared God and who he is, then we praise. Well, we can. It doesn't have to be in that order, but it's an expression of worship. Um, third living creature has the face of an eagle. An eagle is symbolic for soaring, clear, wonderful vision, above the storm. They always fly above the storm. Eagles eat snakes for breakfast. <laughs> Breakthrough. Their dwelling place is high above any predators. So this is worship from heaven's perspective. And that's exactly what happened tonight was when we, it felt, I know you guys all felt it. It felt literally like we came right up above the clouds and soared on eagle's wings. It, after a roar. Yeah, let the lion roar. So uh, that's, that's like um, the expression of worship like an eagle. And the scripture that goes with that is Isaiah 40, verse 3. Get a prize. Isaiah 40, verse 3. Listen, it's the voice of someone shouting, Clear the way through the wilderness for the Lord. Make a straight highway through the wasteland for our God. Okay? I don't know if that's the one that Joe oh. was with. Okay. For, I got the other one. I looked them up, but maybe Isaiah 40. Maybe I, I was 42. Um, but that makes sense. It's like it's a clear, because it's clear. Um, so the fourth living creature has the face of a man, a human face. <laughs> I <laughs> yeah, it has, it has the face of a man. And I always, when I read this when I was a little younger, I was like, why though? That's weird. And then, um, <laughs> weirder than an awesome. <laughs> but, <laughs> so This expression of worship is symbolic for God's redemptive grace. It's the song of the redeemed. Mm -hmm. As human beings, we only get, I'm going to say, the privilege to worship through pain and suffering. No other creature in all of creation can do that. We, they don't know what it's like to be redeemed by Christ. They don't know what it's like because angels aren't suffering. They're not, they don't have to worship through pain and suffering. And once we're in heaven, we won't know that anymore. So it's the only time we can give that song is on earth. The gift that God gave us. And I know that pain and suffering, it's hard to call it a gift. I understand because I've gone through pain and suffering. Um, but it's, it's only for a time. It's a sacrifice. And it is, in a way, a gift because it grows you, it matures you. Um, it, if I hadn't gone through the things I had gone through when I was younger, I would not be the same character as I was today. I would be, I would be lost. I would be worse, actually, if I didn't go through pain and suffering. So um, the punchline of all worship, a song only man can sing to God. Angels cannot give this type of worship to God to worship through pain and suffering and hard times, to worship as the bride of Christ. And the scriptures that go with this is Revelation 21, verse 3. And it says, I heard a loud shout from the throne saying, Look, God's home is now among his people. He will live with them and they will be his people. God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes and there will be no more death or sorrow or crying or pain. All these things are gone forever. And Ephesians 2, 4, verse 7, 4 to 7. Ephesians 2, 4 to 7. <coughs> 
But God is so rich in mercy, and he loved us so much, that even though we were dead because of our sins, he gave us life and he raised Christ from the dead. It is only by God's grace that you have been saved. For he raised us from the dead along with Christ and seated us with him in heavenly realms because, because we are united with Christ Jesus. So God can point to us in all future ages as examples of the incredible wealth of his grace and kindness towards us, as shown in all he has done for us who are united with Christ Jesus. <coughs> so I really hope that learning about the four living creatures and their purpose and how they actually tie into very practical um, tools of worship would, would bring revelation to the book of Revelation because it's not scary or weird. It's just a mystery that can be revealed by the Holy Spirit if you ask. So um, I encourage you, if you've never read the book of Revelation, read the book of Revelation, but pray before you read it. And I know maybe it's a, it's a difficult book to read for some, but for me it's never been difficult because I've experienced that it's real. It's holy and it's true and I'm passionate about it <laughs> Isaiah 40 verse 31 whoops <laughs> such a mom thing to say whoops <laughs> okay Isaiah 40 31 but though, oh yeah, we did say, yeah, we did read that one, but those who wait on the Lord. 40, 31. Yeah. That's the, that's what you said. No, you're wrong. No, it isn't. You're right, that is the one. Read the right one. That is the one. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Oh, but I mean earlier, yeah. Yes, yes. So those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. Yeah, mounting up on wings and eagles. Yeah, that's, the, that's one. the one. Yeah, that was the one oh, I had in my sermon. That's the one you had. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Dad. All right. <laughs> yeah. So that's really good, hun. All so right. yeah, the four creatures are the four expressions of worship. Mm -hmm. So there's lots of gems and keys hidden in the Book of Revelation. Yeah. But pray before you read it. Don't just read it because then you'll be confused and. <laughs> worried. <laughs> so if you are, talk to somebody like Pastor Tyler. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 All right. So, so yeah. So just one more thing. Um, again, do not be afraid. God is a good, good God. And he will not ever let you fall. He will uphold you with his righteous right hand. He will not let you fall. He won't let you fall. Sure, I'll pray. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you, God, for this wonderful, rich, amazing night. Um, I pray um, that you would bless the stewards of your word, that you would bless the pastors and the teachers, that you would bless the evangelists and the people that aren't here right now but that are sacrificing their time to take care of others right now. I pray that you would bless them. Um, yeah, I just pray uh, that tonight we would go and lay in our beds with intention to meditate on you, that we would choose to go out of our way to acknowledge you tonight. Um, I pray that each of us would be ready to hear something from you um, and that it would be very personal and encouraging. I just bless this time, seal it, <laughs> in Jesus' name, amen. 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 <laughs> <laughs>